so it's better with water. Hey, this is John Young with the Weekend Handyman. Today we're going to go through the steps in installing a bidet on this toilet right here. Uh, this is a, a round bidet. This is bio bidet. Um, this is just a, a round bowl uh, bidet that we're going to be putting on. It's basically one that has the heated seat. It has the heated water. It has different settings and all the controls are right there for it. And we're going to basically be replacing the, the lid on this toilet and putting this on and getting it all plumbed and ready to go. Now, a couple of things when you, you start is first, we're gonna have to shut the water off and do some things with that. And we'll cover that in the video so you'll see that. There's a power cord on this unit and that has to be plugged into an electrical outlet. Now, the electrical outlet that it needs to go into has to be a GFI outlet. So, this isn't something that just anyone can do. We have a GFI outlet just off to the side here. I'm gonna probably we have to have an electrician come because it's right inside this cabinet right there. Um, I would have to have a, an electrician come in here to put a GFI probably on this side as, as they can come through this wall and do that. But for now, we're going to run it to our spot in here. So you'll need electric for it. Again, GFI outlet. You'll need water, which we'll show you how to do all of that. And then it's really quite a simple process. Most folks uh, can do this in probably about a half an hour, hour at tops. This one hopefully won't take that long. Now let's take a look at what tools we will need. First off, we're going to need to take the, the, current, uh, the current water line and things. We're going to need to take those off and we're going to need to take the lid off. This particular lid that I am sitting on right here has a, it needs a half inch deep socket, which I have over somewhere here in my vicinity. We'll find it in just a few, a few moments. Secondly, then, is when we go to put the new one on. This is one of the little little bolts or that we used to secure the seat. And I want to show you because the one that is that's coming off is a it has the metal the screw part of it, and, but it's a nylon uh, nylon nuts and such on it so that. You could tighten it, but not over tighten it before you strip it off. This has, we're going to do the mounting plate. We've got our little, our little uh, screw there. That is a Phillips, but it's the larger size. It's a little bit larger than number two. So I went to my multi-tip and grabbed the larger one. And the idea behind this is it's rubber and there's no way to grip the bottom with anything but your fingers. They do that so that you're not going to over tighten. Porcelain toilets, it's really easy to over tighten and break in a couple of spots. One is down here in a floor mount, which you guys have, have seen if you've been, you see those little floor mounts. The second one is where the tank and the lower part, where they meet. If you over tighten those nuts, you can actually crack the tank and have problems. So what they did in this one to make sure you wouldn't do that is you can use your tool on the Phillips side of it. And I just get that lined up. Tool on the Phillips side of it to tighten it, but not on the other side. So this is what's going to happen. This is untightened and this is tightened, so you guys have an idea, is that when you tighten it up, it's going to compress this rubber, and that rubber is going to act as a holding mechanism to hold that mounting plate. And I'm just gonna back it out so it will be ready to go, because we have to take this completely apart in order to go and put the mounting plate on the toilet. Now to get started when you're working with the toilet, you're, we're going to need to take the water line off. So I'm going to be taking the water line off down here. Well, let's jump to the other camera. We're going to be taking the water line off up here, just at the, let me tip this up a little bit so you guys can see, right there. This is where we're going to be putting a T, which will allow us to go and uh, power the toilet, the, the uh, new seat, plus the toilet. So we're, we've got this braided water line here. Now this is an area in which, if you have it, had this on here for a long period of time, this is a great time to replace this. And we're actually going to be replacing it because there are some gaskets in there, and I'm a little concerned about that. One of the things that some of the instructions don't talk about is you need to drain the tank. You shut the water off down here. And the valve's dripping a couple as it gets towards the end. And now I've got my little rag to wipe everything up. So now the water is off here. And we're going to drain the tank. First off, we're going to flush the... And now we can take the water line apart. Now typically, the top area right here is all done with hand tightening. So we can take that out by hand. And the bottom is done with wrenches. Now in this case, I'm going to replace it. If this toilet had been here for a month or two or maybe a couple of years, 
You probably wouldn't need to replace this line, but we're going to replace it in this application. So the water line you're going to be needing for this is coming from our bottom here, which is generally a 3 8 inch compression fitting right here. And if you look inside there, you can see that there's a little white plastic ring. That's what's going to be making contact and sealing up. So we don't need to have any kind of Teflon tape or any thread seal tape on this connection. The top is, in this case, it was plastic on plastic. Let me just back this out. And there's going to be a little water that's going to come down, but hopefully not too much. And that's what we've got a rag here. Now the top was a plastic a plastic on plastic connection. You can see that this is plastic up here in the toilet, and this end was plastic. And inside that, you see there's a, a black little gasket right there. Now that's the concern, because that little black gasket in this particular case has been in here for nearly 20 years. And I want to replace it because putting this on a new, a new connection, because here's a little T right here, putting this together, and if, it, if this and this don't make a good connection, we're going to have leaks. So it's just better in my mind to replace it at an opportunity like this so the new gaskets will be able to seal. And this is our new one. And this will go into that and seal up and hopefully be good to go for a number of years again. To take this off on the bottom here, I'm going to tip this up just a little bit so you guys get a better view of this. To take this off, there's we have our, our little nut here on the 3 8 inch compression fitting. And that we're going to be using pull out our Craftsman adjustable end wrenches here and get that one set. Now I could wrench on that, but I'm a little concerned at what kind of torque it's going to be putting on the rest of it. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take two wrenches in this configuration and see if I can somehow help hold that, that valve. I wonder if I can do it that way. Let's see. It's kind of a tight area. But I want to see if I can get enough in there so I can support the valve and take this compression off so that I'm not putting all of the force on the connections down below and it feels like it's pretty it's pretty loose now but I don't want to put it so I end up spinning that valve somewhere say if there's a solder connection down there somewhere that I'm going to have a major problem so just taking a little time to support that would be a huge benefit So there we are, we have that taken off and we need to have our rag handy because there's more water that spilled out. And this is what we're going to be replacing it with. You can see that it's a 3 8 inch compression there. It is a 20 inch long version and it's 7 8 which is toilet on the top, toilet one. And if we look in there, our just, our, our, yeah, that's what we're replacing a 20 inch, so we are good to go and I'm making a mess. We're going to start with that compression end and get that on here. Now once we have it on and we get it, we can finger tighten this one. And once we have it finger tight, we're going to go and use our two wrenches to, to support it and tighten it up the rest of the way. Now we don't need to super over tighten this because we just need it to get in there and squeeze that little rubber gasket to the point that it will make contact and we're good to go. Now I'm going to take this label off because we don't need it anymore. A lot easier, a lot easier said than done. And next, we're going to be installing that little T up here, and we're going to be putting our our water line in, our main feed, and we've got the line coming out for the bidet. So the bidet water line has two different ends. This is the one that will actually go to the the seat itself, and this is the end which will connect to our diverter or our valve here, our T valve. Now it's going to. You can see that we have the black, the little black gasket right here. And that's going to fit tight to that. Oh, there we go. And then our little metal nut is going to pull it all together. So we will compress that little black piece and not have any leakage. So we're going to once again use our adjustable end wrenches. Oops, go ahead. And tighten it up, but not super tight. I'm not going to put, a, put two different tools together to do that and then this will go and attach to the toilet. Then we can add the water, the water line, and again there's a gasket inside, the white gasket, so we can thread this together. And this particular one is only going to be hand tightened because there's no ability to do much beyond that. 
and then we can take it, thread it onto the toilet, and tighten it up. I'm going to use a wrench in here to just a, just tighten it up a little bit, not a ton, because I don't want to break anything. Basically, the idea with this is if you're having to reach, if you're putting your hand out here too far in the wrench, that's way too much leverage. And we just want to have it so it's just a little bit better than hand tight. So there we are. Now our line, our water line is plumbed. And now next what we're going to do is we're going to take the seat off. Now we've got two nuts on each side, and that happens to be a half an inch. And I'm using the half inch deep sockets to get up in here. I'm going to try to do this just off the video. So it fits in there and we can do what we need to do. A shallow socket could work, but not so much. Uh, not, not so well with the swing and such, so I wanted to go to the deep one. But this particular toilet has a couple of locks. This is the locked position, and this is the unlocked. There's little marks on it. Once it's unlocked, we can go lift it and pop it right off. Then we can take our socket and loosen this up. And it comes right off. If you need to, there you could use a screwdriver to hold the top, but sometimes you don't need to have the screwdriver. Now this was a slow close seat that was on here, which the new bidets, most of the bidets are slow close seats also. This particular one had also the little these little flares. That was a centering uh, ability for the slow close seat. So for many toilets that you're installing right now, they come like this with that the little burrs here that will help center that piece when you go to install it. Next, we're gonna install the mounting plate. Now there's an arrow on the mounting plate and that goes toward the tank. And then on each side, you can see that there's some, some grooves and that is so our little clips can give us the ability to adjust and move things back and forth. And then once we're done with the adjustment, we can tighten it down. So we have to take our nuts apart because the bolt and the washer will go on the top and then it'll be that little adjustment plate then the full plate and then through the porcelain into the nut at the very bottom okay so we're going to put the plate on again arrow if you can see the arrow the arrow is towards the back we drop that plate into place then we have our nuts with the washer that goes on top we go through the hole and then we come in the bottom with the the nut so we can get everything all secured that way. So we drop both of those in just to hold them into place. You can actually see the nut. Let me show you that. Right there, there's the nut. So it's going this way with the nut part being the last. So we're gonna have to put a little bit of pressure on it so the bolt can get into that nut. And then we can start It'll start to tighten it up and pull it up. Now, we're not going to tighten it all the way. We're going to get it started and pretty much get the, the threads so they're at the bottom of this little tube. Because if we go too far and have it too tight, we're not going to have it. We're going to have to kind of struggle adjusting things a little bit more. So now we have some adjustment and such for our mounting plate. Next, we're going to actually mount the bidet. And there's a little piece of blue tape right here. I'm going to actually show you this a little bit more here. A little piece of blue tape. We're looking at the underside of it. We're going to take that off. And then this little right here, this is, if you see the pictures and such, this looks like it's a huge uh, heating and drying area. It's this little guy right there. That's the dryer. So we're going to turn this around and line it up. And voila, we are we are mounted. It is mounted. We can get it into position where we want it, and then we can take it, take it off, and tighten it up. Every once in a while, in the middle of a project, you find out you have a problem. Let's take a look. So we snap the seat on, and you're noticing that the bidet lid is much longer than my round toilet. The one that I should have is a total of 18 inches from front to back. This one is over 20 inches from front to back. So we've got the wrong lid, which means that you can see it right here. 
if you've got little little guys and that are getting on here to go potty, this is the porcelain, and that's not going to work. So we have the wrong the wrong one. I'm going to finish the installation video for those of you who are wanting to watch the rest of it, but know that this is coming off, the old seat's going back on, and I'm going to have to do something different because this is the wrong seat. So to wrap up, we're going to need to remove this. We've got it kind of centered where we want it to be. On the other side, where we've got the control side, on the other side there's a little button you push, and then we can slide the toilet off. I'll show you that right there. You can see it right there, that little button. We push this button, and that's the release to release from the bracket. And then we can go and take our, our screwdriver and snug everything down. Again, we don't want to over tighten. We just want to pull it till it is pull it up so it is snug so that the stool will not slide around. If the lid does slide around, you can always take it off and put it back. Uh, tighten it up just a little bit more and you're good to go. That cord out of there. there. Okay, so the toilet is lined up. Now with the lid lined up, the final part is to connect our water line. Our water line is going to come in and connect up and under here. I'm going to take it off one more time and show you. Right here is where it's going to connect. You can see the thread right there, and we will be bringing the water line, making sure that our gasket is there, and we're going to put this on. Just want to make sure it's a little, a little easier when it's more in line. And once it's lined up, this is a hand tighten, although there are flat spaces on here for, for uh, using a tool. But I'm going to just do it by hand and see if that's going to get it tight enough. And then we can put, snap our lid back on. And again, I don't have it super tight because this is obviously not going to be a permanent installation. So if everything is correct here, and we'll have, we can get the water lines tucked in a little bit more. I should be able to turn the water on. Looks like we are doing well. We're not seeing any leaks. The toilet is filling. There we are, we are full. It doesn't seem that we have any leaks going on. Everything looks good. Next thing we plug it in and you can be ready to go. But because of it not being the right seat for this application, I'm not going to plug it in or do anything more than this. I just wanted to basically pressure check, pressure test it, and we are good to go. So there's there's how you do it. I'm gonna have to do it obviously again because this is not the right right uh, bidet for this application. We'll uh, have the information in the description below of the pieces and everything that we used with this and how it all went together. And hopefully this will be helpful for you. And hopefully check the size. I just held it up to the old one about before we did this and I thought it was about the same size, but obviously that two inch difference is a big difference when it comes to elongated or round toilet seat lids. This is John Young of The Weekend Handyman. Thank you for watching. For more tips and how-to videos, go to weekendhandyman.com.